Welcome to the Center of the World Woodshop, where I'll be showing you how to carve an oak leaf with a little acorn on the side. And pictured here are the patterns that I can choose from that I've already made out of quarter-inch plywood sometimes, or just quarter-inch wood. Paper starts the whole project. My tools carving tools that I've collected over the years. I'll pick out four of them for this project. As you see here, one includes the veiner, two gouges, three gouges really, number three, number five. Well, actually two fives. One's a fishtail. Part of the operation will be to take the pattern that I've made and transfer it to the wood that I'll be carving on. Fairly straightforward, if as you can see. From here, I can cut that shape out on the bandsaw and then apply it to a substrate, in this case just a piece of hardwood that enables me to screw it down. I'll take this minute to do a little sketching on the pattern to outline the acorn and the flow of the veining of the leaf gives me an idea of where I want to make my chisel marks. It gives you a chance to orientate yourself to the leaf pattern. Uh, from here I begin the carving itself trying to get the overall shape. I want the front of the leaf to actually touch down, so I'm just removing material as quickly as I can to get that overall shape, because one side will be left high to where your fingers will go, and the other side will take low. This continues on for a while. Here I begin defining the acorn and shaping it, so you have to first rough it in, define the lines. Now I can start creating the round. It needs to happen at the same time as you bring the leaf in so that you can develop both at the same time. certain point you'll want to possibly put some more lines in, in this case for the stem and the final shape of the acorn. And defining that stem could be fairly important to give you more realistic leaf.
I'm entering the final stages of the carving where I'll be going for finished cuts and trying to give it some undercutting to show a little bit more how it lifts off the background. And finally, it appears that I'm pretty satisfied with what I've done and start giving it a, a sandpaper finish where we'll get these sharp edges off of it and make it look a little more worn, softer. I always say the carving should be able to do a nylon test. If you imagine someone wanting to clean it, you won't want the rag to catch on anything. So this is very important to soften it considerably. Having completed the carving, I can take it off its background and release it to take it over to the sander where I'll be creating the area where the fingers will be able to reach behind. The sander is just a six inch belt sander. I can use the end to create this scooping which I actually already created but forgot to turn the camera on so I'm just doing some touch up here. I'll also use the 12 inch flat wheel to clean up the edges where the bandsaw has left some irregular marks that aren't necessarily good looking. <laughs> 